happy evening parents the lockdown has been extended and i hope all are safe and doing good uh, this is geeta magesh here and i hope i'm audible i hope i'm visible hope so okay so i'm a clinical psychologist so before i begin i will just tell what exactly is my profession all about so just like the medical council we are licensed by the rehabilitation council of india and we are the authorized uh, team to do iq testing personality testing or any kind of mental functions or disabilities so in adult cases maybe we have marital issues family therapy sexual dysfunctions personality disorders de addiction cases so we do assessments and therapies for these and uh, uh am i audible perfect okay so in children we uh, deal with cases like uh, autism adhd uh, learning disorders emotional disorders eating disorders or anger management many others i also do career counseling and assessment so that's about the profession and uh now uh, lockdown has been already extended i'm sure most of us are uh, you know a little angry irritated frustrated and having some kind of fear why uh, you know we are going through all this let's talk a little about how we manage anxiety uh, during this situation especially in children so in children currently they have no outdoor play they have no friends sadly so best option is they are glued with tv and phone and uh, they are isolated though most of the time they are with the parents they are in their own uh, uh, you know own world with their video games or instagram or tiktok so many things nowadays and sadly all this uh is bringing a lack of schedule in them now keeping all these in place it leads to anger frustration depression sometimes boredom um anxiety fear and most importantly screen addiction in children so how is that we can deal what can we do during this period to manage children uh the best thing is uh explain and give realistic information which means that of course you need to cut down the tv time especially the exposure to the news and when you as a parent are giving the information let it be realistic and strike a balance keeping the age of the child in view and knowingly or uh, unknowingly what happens is we discuss a lot of things in front of children so we need to avoid doing that and if children are coming down expressing their worries oh mama so many people have died oh dada you're not going to office they have their own worries or school is closed or i need to play they have many things uh what we do you know to quickly cut them out of so what we do is or sometimes even i do one knowing lays oh nothing will ha happen beta or we say it's okay it's okay no uh, don't worry but it's not correct to dismiss their worries and we should never make false promises instead it's always a good idea to talk to them about what the family is doing what mummy is doing to keep the child safe what the government is doing to keep safe every one of us and what specifically we would be doing when someone in the family is going to fall sick so when we are speaking about these things it will definitely create a positive thought process in the child so the fear anxiety or you know that kind of depressive thoughts what would happen would slowly reduce and uh, apart from this what we can do is the best thing is i think so most of us uh, 
all the adults have lost the routine because there's no office um, you know cooking also for all mummies is a little slowed down so we need to get into routine um for the child for the family of course and when we are doing a routine for uh, the child you can make a schedule in such a way like you have the timing uh, left side and have the specific work that has to be done just like a timetable what we have in our schools so instead of the subjects maybe you can write 6 to 7 wake up and uh, fresh up and then 7 to 8 maybe a uh, breakfast or 8 to 9 i'm just giving you an example though so in this way you can include a little bit of academic work a little bit of help in the kitchen uh, of course play time and play time with family where you can have maybe some kind of board game uh, antakshari something to do with the family uh, and of course interaction with other uh, you know relatives and of course their friends importantly so have this all together and maybe you can make a, a schedule for the day and of course you can also include story time that's one thing which uh, children love so uh, um, some parents might be asking uh, we are not uh, you know where to find the stories or we are not very good at telling stories sometimes we can cook up our own stories and tell of course and on google you have many moral and show uh, you know short stories <coughs> so that's uh, something that we can plan out during this uh, you know lockdown period and uh, what else you can do uh, apart from this it's very important that you have a set meal timing and a bedtime that is something you know if it is uh, uh, not in place everything goes haywire and uh, have some indoor exercises you know it would be really fun to do with the family have some stretching yoga um, anything as a family it would really be fun and exercise of course will keep us fit and uh, you can also teach a new skill uh, to the child it might be very simple like making a sandwich or uh, folding his clothes or her clothes making the dinner table ready some new skill which the child is going to do as a part of you know the daily routine that's uh, one thing which you can include in the schedule so if the schedule in place and if you are sticking up somewhere in uh, some corner of the child's room and that would always remind the child what he's supposed to do every day and uh, the moment he is doing all the activities for the day maybe you can put up a smiley over there telling that mommy and papa are happy uh, looking at what the child is doing so that's something which you can help the child do uh, during this lockdown and uh, uh, most importantly we should not be really strict uh, as the child is still trying to adjust to the new situation just like us so a little relaxation is okay but having all this in place every day is the most important part to deal with the situation and in spite of doing all this there might be chances where um, the child is asking some kind of you know repetitive assurance uh, mama are you sure is everything going to be fine or so many people are dying what's going to happen you know all these questions if they are regularly asking then that is a red flag there is some kind of hidden fear in the child so that needs to be addressed immediately talk to your child you know in his age appropriate fashion in form of a story or any which way but you need to dig the information out but if there's any child who is going through that kind of phase where they are seeking repetitive assurance then it's always better you openly talk to the child if not you better consult a mental uh, health profession nowadays there are most uh, you know many lines uh, which are working free for uh, this covid 19 i am also a volunteer for the same at the end i will also share those numbers with you all and uh, the other thing is knowingly or unknowingly we transfer our anxiety to the child the situation is bad uh, maybe the mummy is always in the kitchen 
trying to dance to the tunes of the family and uh, there might be some kind of you know uh, distress or uh, maybe uh, dad is worried because of uh, sitting at home for long hours so knowingly or unknowingly we may transfer our anxiety so that is again something which we need to be careful about so what should we do to uh, you know uh, uh, make sure that we are not transferring our anxiety uh, of course i'm not currently uh, speaking more about adults today uh, we will speak only about children so just to ensure that the child is safe it's very important that i take care of myself of course if uh, i am not doing good today my house would be in a mess so it's very important that you have a me time a time for yourself something which you like to do so when you have me time do something which you love to do some pleasurable activity some might be uh, enjoying uh, gardening work or watching tv or uh, reading books some that's something which i love to do so when i have a reading time for example uh, i have a set reading time so 8:30 to 9:30 is my reading time immediately after dinner so i have that time at least 45 minutes to 1 hour i'm with my book so even my children will not disturb me and that gives me some kind of energy so that's something which you also can try and uh, the other thing is it's better to share you know some of your burden or stress with someone where you can uh, freely speak so when you're sharing with someone uh, you have a listening ear you feel a little comfort you know somewhere a little comfortable zone that can also make you a little peaceful so when you're taking care of yourself because your child you know child is in safe hands so that's something which we can do for children uh, during this covid situation any questions still here anything that you all would like to ask uh before we go to the other important and the critical topic of the day okay i don't see um uh, any messages coming up okay a moment <clears throat> all right so we would uh, move to the next uh, topic for the day early detection of uh, special needs in children we might be uh, seeing some uh, special child somewhere in the school or at uh, you know in our neighborhood but what exactly we mean a special need or a sort of a mental disability or uh, you know a disability in a child so that is uh, a delay in age appropriate physical growth or uh, behavior um maybe uh, there is no age appropriate uh, behavior or emotions or even adaptability the child is not uh, learned how to adapt to a new situation maybe school maybe home maybe uh, get together these also form a part of the special need and these behaviors especially are distressing we are not speaking about the physical disability because i am into mental health so i would be talking about the uh, mental needs of the child or the special needs so these behaviors of the child are distressing for the child and the people around and it definitely interferes in the daily living of the child so that's what we call a special need and uh, when i speak about special need they are you know a list of uh, uh, a big list of disorders especially in children you have uh, autism which is commonly known by everyone uh, i should say my parents favorite term is adhd my child is hyperactive and then they have uh, mental retardation of course or intellectual disability is the other term which we use now 
and we have some you know kind of misbehaviors which we uh, professional terms we call it as conduct disorders or oppositional disorders where uh, when you say please do that is when your son or your daughter doesn't do or when you say don't do that is when they will do or there are some other serious you know conduct disorders where they are harming self or other people and they are learning disorders most of the preschool parents do have questions about learning disorders and then comes the emotional disorders emotional disorders uh, depression or anxiety you know parents do ask uh, is there a possibility for a 3 years old child to have emotional disorder or depression yes of course there is there are high chances because uh, children observe well they are very good observers but they are very bad interpreters so when things are being uh, you know wrong at home or maybe uh, there might be some kind of chaos at home and the way they interpret may be extreme so they it might lead into depression so those are some kind of a depression uh, you know emotional disorders in uh, children um i have a question here from mr ramakrishna i want to ask uh, one question that's what he says my boy 3 years old he don't like food some autism problem that i observed how handle how do i handle him please give some suggestions yes uh, we will be coming into that how was the next question is from um, mr saifi how is mild autism detected or identified any visible signs yes we are flowing into the topic so the most important question as you'll see autism uh how do we identify autism autism generally is seen by the age of 3 years by the time the child is reaching 3 years most of the time it becomes very clear are there very rare cases when it is very mild maybe we will not be able to see so in autism also there are, that's an umbrella term so you have under autism you have mild moderate severe you have asperger syndrome there are many so we need to see which category the child falls into but most uh i have questions flowing up i will complete autism and then go to aggressive child there was a question there okay so uh, autistic children, how do we identify them we will go with that question first and maybe then i'll get into questions um so the most important thing is their eye contact would be poor they would not look at you when you talk and there would be no social smile you smile at them you expect the smile back that doesn't happen and they don't understand social cues you tell them hi or you say them bye they don't respond to such cues and uh, they can't relate to people uh, maybe some relatives are walking in and mom says wish him wish her or, or you know dance in front of her tell her i no they don't and they have poor uh, peer relationship uh, means their friendship maintenance is very less or you may see that they actually do not have friends they are in their own isolated world and uh, these children do not have a fear of danger you know you can, they can go to any height and just jump off or uh, they can just cross the busy road they do not have that fear of danger and apart from uh, these uh, symptoms they might be a uh, you know drastic uh, change when it's uh, speech so most of the time uh, i should say at least 70% of the cases which i have seen there is a delay in the speech the milestone of the speech is delayed or even if it is achieved sometimes it's lost in between and there is repetitive use of words they might be using the same word continuously like ra 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 ra, ra or come 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 something like that and they make some kind of unusual sounds you know the small uh, coin sound or squealing sound they something which you may not be able to understand so that's about the speech and uh, uh there is also a difference in uh, the repetitive uh, you know 
uh, their behavior patterns, their motor behavior also, there will be some kind of difference. Uh, it is repetitive in the sense, you can see that the child is continuously nodding, just like that, or just, you know, swinging the hand, something like that, which will be repetitive in them. And they might be throwing temper tantrums, which is very difficult to control. And uh, they, uh, you know, ask always for sameness. Like uh, if, for example, you are supposed to sit in so-and-so chair, that is where they want to sit. If the chair is changed, the place is changed, then you will see hell. Or they insist on wearing the same dress every day. Something like that. I had a patient, um, you know, who would not sleep if there is, you know, that uh, a different blanket uh, which the child needs. And if that is not there, mom is going to see stars. So that's uh, one thing. And uh, they also have a sort of, you know, uh, attachment to some kind of objects, something. A case which I have seen, the child was so attached with his shoe. The shoe is also there in his bed. So that is the kind of attachment what they have. And uh, uh, they even have uh, unusual uh, sensations. They might be, uh, uh, you know, children who would like to smell the food and then eat. Or they even smell people when they are approaching. At the same time, I would like to also mention that their senses are you know, very hundred times better than you and me. Their sensations were, are really good. Even their eyesight is very good. They are very sharp. And um, what else? Yeah, when it comes to senses, they're insensitive to pain. Not all of them, but some cases are insensitive to pain. A very good example which I can share is, I had a parent who has come uh, for an admission. Uh, sorry, I'm also into um, early education for the past 10 years. So I had an admission uh, for a nursery, three years old child. And uh, of course, the favorite topic for any parent is talking about the child. So mom was so happy telling that uh, that was the second child. And she was like, uh, he's so understanding. Uh, he always plays by him himself. He doesn't trouble me at all. All he needs is just some set of uh, toys. And uh, even he's, if he's hurt, he even doesn't shout or cry. It is me who has to actually look at the, uh, the child and then put some balm or medicine. I did not see the child during that interaction, but all the symptoms which the mom was proud of was, you know, rooting me towards autism. And of course, the child was autistic. So these are some symptoms of autism. Uh, so I hope I have uh, answered uh, autistic questions. Mr. Uh, Ramakrishna and uh, Mr. Saifi. Uh, have uh, aggressive child, yes, we will uh, come to it when we are doing ADHD. And uh, how can we make a parent to understand that ch the child is specially able when they like to follow ignorance as bliss without understanding that they are damaging the development of a uh, child? Yes, uh, Madam Sri Devi. <coughs> That's a very good question. That's something which I really wanted to cover, and that is the reason I picked up this topic when Iris has approached me because parenting, I thought anyone can do it. But when we're speaking about special needs, uh, that is one thing which I felt is the need of the hour. Most of the time, especially at, um, you know, at least in our country, when there is some kind of, uh, you know, um, mental disability you call, or let it be in adults or let it be in children, even when we identify something, we do not uh, consider consulting a doctor, a professional or someone. We have a taboo there, a stigma associated. So it's always better to consult the professional and get a proper assessment done. If uh, the parent is, uh, uh, you know, ignorance is a bliss, I understand. We have a set procedure to counsel uh, the parents once the assessment is done. 90% of the time, it's very difficult for the parents to accept that there is some challenge with the child. 
so it does take uh, time for the parent to understand so we give something called psychoeducation to the uh, parent specifically with regard to that kind of disability or that kind of challenge so when we are counseling the parent we also tell them what is that they have to do we have some uh, we have uh, uh, training which we give specifically to parents which is called the parent management uh, training pmt which is generally done for all the childhood disorders so that's how uh, we do um, it may not be easy for a regular person uh, to handle um, not only the child with the challenge, but even the uh, parent, of course. It will take some time for the information to sink in. So I, I don't know if I have that answered the question, dear. I'm moving to the next uh, question. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Uh, this is by Ms. Sumitra Patnayak. If a child behavior is quite normal like others, but finds difficulty in learning and repetitive, uh, repetitive teaching the same lesson, how to handle this? Uh, we will see this when we are coming to learning disorders. I am covering that now. Uh, and. Uh, one uh, other question is one of my student she likes only blue color things every time uh, is she autistic uh, then even i should be autistic because everything i pick up is most of the time blue or black not necessary all the symptoms that i have mentioned are uh, you know the key symptoms presence of only one or two symptoms doesn't make the child autistic so you require a detailed assessment. When we are doing uh, the assessment, we look uh, towards, you know, it's a holistic approach that we go through. We observe the child. The assessment takes about an hour. So we might be giving some questionnaire to the parent. We might be asking the child to do something. We might be, you know, having a friendly relation or first uh, have a good uh, rapport with the child and the parent. And then we try to understand. And all these things, whichever I'm going to talk today, do not have any kind of medical tests. So you do an MRI scan or a CT scan or um, any kind of X-ray or anything. These things will not come out. These are all changes seen in behavior. So uh, a clinical psychologist is the person who will be able to give you a detailed report. And even if you have to go to a psychiatrist for the same, the case will again be given to a clinical psychologist for a detailed assessment. And sometimes it so happens uh, because we are just meeting the child for just for an hour or so, either the parent uh, over reports or under reports because we rely completely on the parent. We ask, is the child staring into pace, uh, spaces, looking at the blank ceiling? So mom says, no, no, not at all. He does it very rarely. So we have to go by what the uh, parent is telling. So maybe we have to do the assessment again in few cases. So that's how we decide whether the child is autistic or not. We have set uh, evidence-based and you know set norms to decide or uh, I mean to assess the child uh, with regard to autism, ADHD, or any kind of learning disorders. Okay. So um, I will uh, move to the next point. Uh, that's uh, ADHD or uh, called as uh, attention deficit hyperactive, uh, hyperactive disorder. I should say it's all uh, uh, mommy's favorite term. The moment they see the boy being physically active, uh, it's like my boy is hyperactive. Uh, it's difficult to control him. But I should be telling all mummies that hyperactive is considered as a disorder. So maybe at least after this session, whoever are watching uh, will not be using the term. So ADHD, it can be of two types. Uh, again, you have versions mild, severe or moderate. Uh, this can be inattention type or hyperactive type in the sense it's not necessary that all ADHD children should be hyperactive. There is no hard and fast rule. The child might be a very good boy, but his attention might be having a problem. So those are the two different categories what we see in ADHD. 
So this is seen from three years onwards. So three years and above, we uh, generally uh, see or detect uh, ADHD cases. And most commonly, it's seen in boys, but it's not necessary. Uh, we do have girls also with ADHD, but 78% uh, is what research says that it's seen mostly in boys. And uh, how do we identify uh, this being very common uh, problem? Uh, of course, the child is active or overactive in the attention span. Uh, their attention span is low or what we call inattention lack of task in involvement in the sense they keep jumping from one activity to other without completing the first thing that's one thing they are reckless in their behavior they do not think before they act uh, they are impulsive and uh, they are accident prone most of the time you can see them having some kind of bruises on their legs hands something like that and uh, they breach the rules. Uh, they, I mean, that's something which uh, they don't understand, that there is something called rules. So when they don't understand, they just break it. So it's not something which they do consciously. And uh, when you have ADHD, of course, uh, there are uh, associated uh, some kind of uh, learning difficulties with the child. Because the most important uh, thing is their attention and their concentration is poor. So that's about ADHD. And uh, there was some uh, question which was related. Uh, how do we control aggressive child? Uh, it depends on the age of the child. Most of the time, if it is not a disorder, I mean, uh, uh, in the sense, if it is not ADHD and if it's only aggression uh, being the problem, we need to understand what exactly is behind the uh, aggression. The same goes even with adults. So is that uh, the child is depressed or is having some kind of, you know, emotional turmoil going in his uh, mind? And that is the reason he's reacting. Or is there a problem with the parenting style? That is the major uh, thing which I have come across if it is not something to do with, you know, these kind of disorders. So parenting styles in the sense, when we are trying to provide everything the child asks for, then I think uh, there is something that we need to correct in ourselves. Um, we might be having only one child uh, and we want to give the world to him without teaching the importance of what he's being given. So you need to uh, give uh, things with a sort of you know uh, some kind of token uh, there is a system what we call uh, token economy when we are speaking psychiatry that is how we deal with problematic children so what we ask them to do is you now for example if we want them to do uh, homework and he's not doing and he becomes aggressive he's throwing things just because the mom uh, mommy is asking him to do uh, homework yes we will link it with the immediate thing that the child wants. Maybe he wants uh, to see his chota beam or something, or maybe he wants to go out and play. So if you're doing your homework, then you get to see TV. If not, no. Initially, it will be difficult. And especially for mothers, it's difficult because the child might be crying, yelling, throwing things. But it's something like we are deaf and we are blind. We have to be strong when we are trying to teach something to the child. So the child needs to know how important it is to complete the homework. No matter what tantrum he throws or she throws, they complete the homework and then the TV remote is given. And it is given with a condition. You get to watch TV for maybe 30 minutes or 20 minutes, whatever it is. So that's how we try to uh, control aggression, especially when it's coming to aggression. We have to have uh, parent management training. Most of the time, what I've seen, if there is not, if it does not have something to do with ADHD and if it's just aggression, as I've just told you, uh, parents need to go, you know, attend a few sessions to understand what exactly has to be done with aggression. I had a child, um, uh, you know, this is a very interesting case. Uh, you won't believe it. He's in second class. And you know what? He brings a knife <laughs> the moment mom wakes him up to go to school and he has just done it 
after entering second class. So right from July till September, the child has not gone to school. And he is so aggressive. He was so aggressive. He would hit his mom, dad every day in the morning. Just imagine a second class boy holding a knife and uh, telling his parents, I will not go to school. I don't think so any parent might have gone through this, but yes. But if you look back uh, and dig into the case, that happened only in second class, right from when he has joined the school. So he's hardly gone to school for 15 days. And then uh, the years, you know, story continued. So when we dig into it, that is something uh, to do with the class. He was not happy because his friends were not there. There was something shuffled. So we had to write a letter again to the school and get things sorted out. So that's about ADHD. Uh, and uh, I will go to the next uh, point that is uh, intellectual disability. Um, I'm sure uh, this might be common uh, term, intellectual disability or um, mental retardation, what we call in children. Um, but what exactly is mental retardation or intellectual disability? The thing is, our intellectual disability, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, the development of our intellect goes hand in hand with the uh, development of our physical as well as our behavioral uh, characteristics. So, um, you know, if you remember most of the mothers, uh, when you go for your vaccination to your child, uh, the pediatrician might be giving you a small card where you have all the milestones where you have to take, did the child sit at this age, turn at age or walk at this age, something like that, along with your vaccination uh, details. So just like that, we have uh, important milestones which have to be achieved in areas of their physical development, language, their social and personal behavior, and their adaptive behavior also, when you come to uh, the mental health of the child. So all these things put together forms your intellect or what you call the IQ, okay? So uh, normal person, just like you and me, or someone, if there is someone who is uh, gifted there, will be having a, a intelligence which is above 110, or average person would be having a, between 90 to 110. So anything which falls below 90, that is when there might be some kind of problems. If it is, you know, border, there may not be major problems, but of course, you would be some kind of uh, seeing some kind of difference in that person. Um, even mild um, um, IQ also will be having problems. Um, maybe they will not be able to complete their education. Um, maybe up to fifth or sixth is what they can achieve properly, and then they difficulties start. And it's. Um, I mean, they will not be able to study if it is something like severe or moderate. Uh, this is a very rare uh, case, but mild IQ or borderline IQ is something which is commonly seen. So those are the common uh, problems that we see in children. Okay, um, I will look into the questions once we complete this so that I don't lose the flow. So when we are having a child who is uh, having some kind of problems with uh, their uh, intelligence you would be seeing that there is lack of hygiene uh, there would be some kind of laziness any instruction being given uh, may not be followed by the child you might be thinking that he is not listening or he doesn't want to do but the actual thing is that they may not be following what you're trying to tell and uh, they may not, uh, they may be a little messed up in their routine. Even by eating, you can see that they are messy. And uh, most of the time, uh, parents uh, will not be able to see that uh, there is some problem uh, with the child until unless, you know, they are uh, uh, completing their preschool age. But even a slight uh, doubt that you'll have, it's always better to get the IQ assessment done only if you require it's not necessary that everyone has to get an iq test done no we can do iq test even for a two years old uh, child to an eight years old man it's a time consuming process and until unless required no authority even asks for an iq uh, assessment 
so that's about your uh, uh, intellectual disability and uh, now coming to learning disorders um, they are uh, many i mean learning disorders again is an umbrella term i'm trying to cover too many things maybe in this uh, small uh, uh, face time session so i may not be looking into everything but uh, when the child is having some kind of a difficulty using language let it be spoken or written um, or is having difficulty even to do mathematical calculations that is when we call uh, that the child is having some specific learning disorder and this will affect even their listening their uh, uh, speaking skills or reading from the book or you know spelling some words all these might be affected reading difficulties which most of you all may term it as dyslexia uh, that is one common thing which uh, children uh, may be having not necessary uh, parents do fear about it but that happens only when the child is not able to understand the print format of the language so of course when the child is not able to understand the print format even writing back or copying that might be a difficulty and uh, some children may be having expression difficulties they know the answer but they cannot express so it's like uh, say suppose you are asking what is that so you say uh, or maybe uh, they they are trying to tell that is cat but you know it's not a cat it's a dog so you're trying to ask what is that the cat, the boy might be saying that is cat that is cat or that is rat he knows it is dog but he is not able to tell that or uh, um uh, what else uh, i can say or you might ask uh, whose book is this you might hold a book and you ask whose book is this uh the child might be telling the book uh, is raju uh, maybe the actual answer is ramu but he might be telling raju so something like this where they are having difficulties in expression and there are few children who would also be having difficulties with mathematical figures uh they don't understand the mathematical signs uh, or uh, the numbers at time which we uh, professionally term it as dyscalculia no maybe too many terms i'm using so that's one other disorder which we see uh, when it's coming to specific uh, learning disorders so these are some uh, kind of learning disorders which we see most of the parents uh, get um, you know worried when they see that the child is writing uh, c in the reverse fashion or d in the reverse fashion uh nothing to worry if they are just doing it with one letter it's not a learning disorder but if you see that it is happening most of the time then maybe you need to consult and get a detailed assessment done to clarify if it is a learning disorder or not okay um i mean uh, most of these things uh, uh learning disorders uh, with regular practice can be sorted provided we start the intervention at the right time um i should say uh i don't know how many of you all know abhishek bachchan was dyslexic and i uh, if you read his blog or something you will see that they you know he writes up the kind of classes that he has gone it's the same with the uh, hrithik roshan i think he has attained uh, he's gone through some uh, speech therapy classes because he had that uh, stammering so if the intervention is given at the right time maybe we can handle all this so when you're seeing that there is something uh, different in your child of course for a long period of time it's always better to check if they are you know if your family also is seeing the same difference in the child and uh, maybe you can check with your neighbors your friends your class teacher and then if you think everyone are seeing the same uh, kind of difference in the child that is when you actually need to approach for consultation uh your small worries should be the same even with other people adhd is one common thing uh where the child is becoming aggressive or is running around is having uh, wheels on his legs then the mom is there uh, at the clinic to get an assessment done uh, we need to understand parents that if it is adhd or autism or anything the symptoms will remain the same irrespective of the atmosphere you are in 
so if the child is being uh, very good at the school no complaints a smart boy or a smart girl and is messed up at home hitting or uh, running around in the house then there might be some problem in the house or there might be something which the teacher is doing specially or differently so the uh, if the child is having a problem then the problem remains the same irrespective of the place you are in so those are the most important disorders which i thought i will uh, cover today i will not get into the other list uh, it might be too much of information to uh, have it on your head now i will uh, quickly look on to your questions uh, i think i stopped at uh, okay by what age autism can be uh, detected uh, suju sara jacob ma'am uh, that can be detected almost by 3 years 3 years most of the symptoms become evident and uh, yes that's done how can we handle uh, roaming children um i need more information uh, about this is it that the child is moving even with the house or uh, is it that the child is always uh, wanting to go out of the house what exactly do you mean by roaming children maybe if i get more information uh, i can answer this i will share my contact details at the end so if there is anything that you are wanted to you can always contact me okay uh, varsha ji how to differentiate uh, between active child and the child with adhd as i've just told you adhd you will see that the child is either hyperactive or having attention problems and concentration problems irrespective of the place they are in an active child might be active in the school or in specific situations maybe you are giving a chance for the children to tell rhymes the child is waiting to tell uh, uh, you know waiting to tell or is being active enough and tells uh, the rhyme that is not something which we say is adhd and it's not necessary that all adhd children might be uh, uh, having the same problems all the disorders especially the mental disorders the symptoms vary so even if you are asking ma'am what do we do for autism it is tailor made so if you are bringing a child with autism uh, to me i would look at the symptoms i would also uh, have a chat with the parents and check what is their priority what is that they are having a problem with and work on those uh, uh, symptoms first and nothing uh, with uh, autism or any of these disorders is Well, you know nothing can be magic it takes long time uh, i there was a case where i have taken 3 months just to uh, get eye contact for a 4 year uh, old boy so that's how it goes ah uh, soumya nayar ji ma'am addiction to mobile yes and uh, this is something which is new which has come up screen addiction uh, when the syllabus uh, for psychiatry or clinical psychology was written there is nothing called screen uh, addiction that was not even there but now it has uh, become a disorder we have something called screen addiction and uh, you will not believe this when we study we uh, see it uh, on the same grounds of alcohol addiction surprising but yes that is how it is again here um, we follow something called uh, token economy i know things go wrong uh, when you take away the mobile uh, from the child uh, what you can do is uh, have a set time table to give the mobile or the tv and as i've mentioned before link it with what the child wants because we are currently dealing with uh, these time blocks it should not be difficult and it's important that it's controlled now so you can link it up with the next important thing that the child wants when the screen is there there is nothing important to the child that might be the most uh, common thing so uh, apart from this there might be something very common um, where the children like might be something like uh, eating uh, sweets or chocolates something that we link and then we uh, 
deal with addiction uh, that is again a separate session where it is an 8 hours workshop but still uh, to give the basics here that's one thing which you can deal with uh, children and it's very important that you have a lock on their mobile to restrict the kind of apps that they are using that is uh, one thing but see it would be really harsh on my side if i tell that it is we who actually um, give uh, the mobile uh, to the child uh, I sh uh, live uh, the true example is I had the same problem with my child. I have a 10 years old boy and uh, of course his favorite um, I don't even know the game. Uh, what, what's that? Uh, uh, some game he is completely um, Fortnite. Yeah, Fortnite. And he is completely engaged. So what we have done is we have a strict schedule in the house. 8.30 in the night, all mobiles uh, are switched off and it's kept at a place and no one touches and when i'm giving this to my child i also am also supposed to do it so when it is working hours like now we are not working so it goes 8 30 but if not if it is regular working hours because me and my husband have to work it goes off at 9 30 and in the morning the child is not given the mobile so there are some kind of tips that we have to follow it will take time to put everything in place but slowly you need to and addiction deals with many other problems. It leads to, um, you know, um, dizziness and you have a lack of hygiene also. That is one new symptom which is coming up. Okay. And uh, lack of affection, lack of time spending is the reason for autism. Uh, Ram Krishna, sir, uh, not exactly, but affection does play a vital role when it comes to all your psychological problems um we have something called attachment theory which is very important in psychology so it speaks about attachment uh, of the parent at least up to the age of two to two and a half years when there is good attachment with the child the way the child is uh, you know uh, uh, molded as an adult is way different from the child who has not uh, got that attachment but attachment is not the reason for autism it is a pervasive disorder there is no specific reason or uh, that that to be identified autism is a condition which a child is born with so uh, of course if there is uh, stimulation is not enough i mean if the child is not exposed enough to affection or to the environment friendship and all it does add to some kind of problem but not specifically autism I hope I have answered that. And uh, Rena G. Good evening, ma'am. My son is 2.7 years. He meets all the symptoms of ADHD. He doesn't play with toys for long, not even for five minutes. He doesn't follow rules and he keeps uh, throwing things out of the window or at people or he's aggressive and his behavior keeps hitting everyone. Um, Rena G. I will share my contact details at the end. Maybe. Um, we will have a personal chat it's not necessary and i at this point i will not say that you have to be worried or not um, it has to meet all the criteria it has to be there at least for the last six months and the behavior should be same in all the situations as i've just told you if it is there only at home then that is something which has to be changed only at home and um, I think I'm taking a lot of time. I hope Iris is okay with it. Uh, Jitish ji, would helping autism children with a good amount of physical activities help them to learn and think better? Yes, of course it does. We do a lot of physical activities, a special education, and we give them some kind of mind games. So uh, that is one uh, strategy of helping uh, autism uh, children. The interventions which we use, uh, physical activities are a part of it and we also use group therapy uh, group uh, therapy i'm sorry which involves physical activities of the age appropriate group also so that is Chiteshi. and the last question um uh what would be the right learning if once the lockdown is lifted in the month of june and july uh I'm, I'm sorry that I could not understand the question. Uh, uh, 
I, I'm sorry, uh, I could not understand the question, Narmada ji. The right learning, uh, it might be difficult for us to get into the routine. And that is the reason I just mentioned that we need to have a schedule at home. So when you're having a schedule at home, it would be easy for the child to adjust to another schedule again. But there would be some time adjustment issue would be there. It might be again a phase where your child is just joining the school again. So that might be there uh, for some time. And uh, we really don't know when the lockdown would be lifted, at least for school, uh, because it's difficult to control children. Oh, thank you. Um, Mr. Saifi says it's OK. Uh, it's important that the audience should be content. But I have no more questions. Oh, no, I have. Um, Suju Sara Jacob ji. If a child is detected with specific learning disorder at the age of uh, 11 or 12, can it be rectified? Yes, of course, it can be rectified. It may not be completely, but to an extent. It depends on how severe the uh, learning disorder is rectified. See, uh, when we are speaking about learning disorders, I don't know if um, you all are aware. We are having very big uh, you know, celebrities throughout the world who did have uh, learning disabilities. Uh, Tom Cruise or uh, Walt Disney. Walt Disney was dyslexic, so he had a difficulty in um, writing letters, and that is what has moved him towards, uh, you know, making that cartoons. So it is not that big uh, disorder that we have to be worried about. The child might take some time, uh, have uh, difficulties during his school age, but to a certain extent, of course, we can help the child. But regular sessions are important. So he might be visiting the therapist on a regular basis to get the classes done. So it might be more like a sort of a tuition uh, which a child has to attend. OK, I hope that answers. And uh, Radhika ji, the child is very attentive at school, but back at home is very naughty and starts irritating the sibling how to deal with. OK. Mm. Okay, there is uh, the child becomes very hyper. Okay, and she also, uh, I mean, mentioned that it's only happening at uh, home and not in the school. So that itself says it's not a major concern. There is problem at home. And one other thing is uh, when you are going to school, the rules and regulations are different. As soon as you go to school, I mean, the child goes to school, he knows he has a specific place. He is supposed to sit there. He's supposed to listen to a lady or his teacher and supposed to do a set of activities. But when he comes home, would you be happy if he is sitting in one place? No. Say, suppose he's very active at home and he's going to school and being very active, running around in the classroom. Will the teacher be happy? No. What I'm trying to tell is that child will take some time to adjust to both these uh, situations, the school and the uh, home. And at home, what happens is there is a lot of affection, love, and of course, acceptance of temper tantrums. So we do not have strict rules and regulations at home. And that is the reason the child uh, becomes a little naughty or is trying to hit uh, the siblings. So maybe it has to be conditioned. Like today, if you're going to hit your sister, you will not be allowed to go outside. So it has to be with a condition. So, OK, you hit your sister today. So no matter what, you will not go out. The child might be crying, yelling and all. So again, I say, please close your eyes and ears and let the child learn. It's very difficult for a mother to do it, but that's how we have to teach. So I hope I have answered your question, Radhika ji. And uh, I think I have taken solid one hour. Within the next 15 minutes, I'm going to complete one hour with the uh, iris. I thank Iris uh, for giving this opportunity and the people who have contacted me. I hope it helps. And uh, I will share my contact details, as I've just told, in case if anyone would personally contact. This is where you need to contact me. I hope it's visible. Uh, is it visible? Yes. Um, these are my contact details. Please don't look for me in any kind of social websites. I am not there. 
I am not there on Facebook, Instagram or whatever is there. This is what I use. Okay, so uh, these are the contact details and in, in, in case anyone wants to personally have a uh, session, you all can uh, contact me. All right, so thank you for your time and your patience. Um, I will end the session now. Uh, thanks a lot. Have, have a good evening and be safe for the entire period of Corona. Thank you.